Non-alignment is the cornerstone of Indian foreign policy. We've all read about it. It is rooted in realism. Don't interfere in others' wars. Don't make promises you can't keep. And don't fall for big power showmanship. For 75 years, India has followed this policy. Which is why this headline last week raised many eyebrows. It says India held direct talks with NATO in 2019. And why is this important? For starters, NATO is a political and military alliance. India is non-aligned or values its strategic autonomy. So they have no business holding talks. Secondly, it was the first political dialogue between the two sides. India and NATO have coexisted for seven decades. Yet the first talks came only in 2019. The only ones we know about. It tells you something has changed. India's foreign ministry spokesperson was asked about these talks on Friday and he confirmed them but also downplayed them. Listen to what he said. India and NATO have kept in touch in Brussels at different levels for quite some time now. This is part of our contacts with various stakeholders on global issues of mutual interests. As vague as it gets. This meeting in 2019 was all about testing the waters, trying to get a measure of each other. India was represented by senior officials from two ministries, the Defence Ministry and the External Affairs Ministry. The meeting was purely political. Neither side was reportedly interested in any military commitments. Then what was India hoping for? Perhaps more clarity. The Indian side was eyeing convergence on two issues, China and Afghanistan. This was India's focus. Specifically, the ties between Pakistan and the Taliban. Now, according to reports, the meeting revealed three setbacks. Number one, NATO's position on Russia. The Western delegates named Russia as their biggest strategic threat. But India did not see it that way. India still does not see it that way. For India, Russia is a strategic partner. Number two, the China policy. There are divisions within NATO on how to handle Beijing. Europe was more interested in competition than rivalry. And finally, the Taliban. NATO saw the Taliban as a political stakeholder. India did not. Now remember, this happened in 2019. And since then, a lot has changed in geopolitics. For starters, the Taliban are not just stakeholders anymore. They are rulers. Even India is coming to terms with this new reality. And secondly, Europe is at war. NATO has closed ranks against both Russia and China. They're also expanding into the Nordic. But perhaps the most important change is this. India and China are now in open confrontation. The NATO talks were held in 2019. The Galwan Valley clashes took place in 2020. And since then, India's position has hardened. Whether it's cooperation with the Quad or joint military exercises or even statements on Taiwan. Facing deliberate. So on paper, this relationship may look promising. After all, NATO is pivoting east. They invited four Indo-Pacific countries to their last summit. Australia, Japan, South Korea and New Zealand. The question is, should India follow that same path? The simple answer is no. And we can think of two broad reasons why. Number one, NATO is not reliable. They only protect their members, not their partners. Look at Ukraine and how they're faring. So India gains nothing by becoming a NATO partner. Number two, strategic autonomy is working quite well for India. For six months now, India has refused to condemn Russia's invasion. Has that made India a pariah? Has it led to a Western backlash? Well, quite the opposite. India was invited as a special guest at the G7 summit in Germany. So why pick one side when, when you can enjoy both? India must use the NATO to further its own interests and not the other way around. So exchanging ideas is fine, political brainstorming is also fine, but India must be wary of military commitments. And that's what China is on the lookout for. The Global Times published this article on India's talks with NATO. Wherever NATO goes, the region will see intensified division. Asian countries do not want to end up being used as chess pieces by the US, neither does India. This is from the Chinese mouthpiece. Now, a couple of things to note here. One, does China really think India will partner with NATO? And if yes, their India experts need new books. And two, China is spooked by the prospect of this partnership. It's quite evident. Let me quote further from the article. What India means of mutual interest between India and NATO is nothing but their perceived threat from China. Except it's not perceived, is it? The threat from China is very much real and India sees it. So India must use all means available to counter that threat, not by embracing the NATO, but by leveraging it against China. 
Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.